this is the Edgy Perspective. Hey guys, I'm Dan Waldschmidt. As you know, this is a show all about how ordinary people can transform their lives and achieve outrageous results in business. Uh, I was gonna say math. I guess if your goal is great math, then we want you to be awesome at that too. A business, family, community, home, wherever you wanna be awesome, we're gonna talk about it. Talk about hard hitting topics, tough love in your face. If you're willing to bleed, sweat, fight, cry, do it all over again tomorrow, then this is what the show is all about. Welcome, welcome. And for us, I'm excited to be back. I've taken, I think, two weeks off, uh, been busy, been traveling. And so today we came with like both guns loaded. <laughs> where we want to talk about this really hot topic and some of you already pushed back at me and are angry before we even saw this right now about this idea of how to win while playing politics, okay? As I just mentioned, I wrote an article probably two weeks ago called something like only idiots don't play politics. Now I gotta tell you, when I wrote an article, first off I put idiots in the title which made half, half people angry. The other half did like the idea that I talked about politics. Now some people did, didn't even read the post. I could tell because they left comments in there like, I don't want to play politics. And the whole topic uh, uh, of the uh, article was how to navigate around not having to play politics or if you have to, how to win at doing it. So for those people who didn't read it, whatever, go read it or not, I don't care. What we talked about was this whole idea of uh, the real world, the reality of your life and how people make decisions. Now, as you know, I wrote all about edgy conversations the, the fourth section of Edgy Conversations was about this human factor, this human element. Now, you know, we often fault politicians because they come out and they make these statements. They're like, you should invest in me, give me money. And it's very robotic, like, we support this thing. And then on the other hand, you're thinking, are you a real person? You know, people make really harsh judgments about very complex issues about taxes, abortion, right, immigration. Now, we're not going to get into any of those because then you're all going to hate me. <laughs> but those are really complex discussions. How many times have you heard somebody say to you, like, this is a hard subject. There's a lot of gray here. You often hear somebody come out very robotic like and say, this is the right answer. Anyone who disagrees with me is wrong. And we kind of have this feeling in the, uh, the pit of our stomach that it's just icky and nasty and we want to be as far away from that as possible. Now, Truly successful politicians, people who do this well, make us feel comfortable. When my father was serving um, in the Pentagon, that's when Bill Clinton was, was president, he used to say, when you met Bill Clinton, he was a guy, when he shook your hand, it felt like it was just you and him, right? He was the only one in the room, his attention was focused on you. He wasn't like me, wherever my phone is, multitasking, sending tweets, doing all this crazy. It was just, it, it felt like you were the only person. It was a human element to this. So what we're really talking about when we talk about politics is not how you can be a jerk, not how you can play games and do less work, how you can be passive aggressive and master the art of being a moron, right, in the corporate landscape. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is this element of acting and sounding, behaving like a human being. Often we have elections apparently coming up, you know, Days ago, we had Ted Cruz announce he's running for president. We've got Hillary Clinton, who we know is going to run for president whenever she decides to announce it, right? And we look at these people in front of us, and the truly effective leaders, people that we want to vote for, master this game of making us feel like we're on the same playing field. And of course, we know deep down we're not. We don't have the $100 million plus that the Clintons have. We don't have you know, the, the background and the experience. And, you know, some of the cachet that Ted Cruz brings uh, to this discussion. But uh, we want to believe truly that they're humans and we're humans. And so that kind of puts us on the same level. Now, check yourself. Because most of how we act in communities, churches, business, politics, other organizations, is not really human. We kind of take this, I'm right, you're wrong. If you disagree with me, then you must be wrong. We protect our own pet issues, and yet we don't often notice in others the fact that they're behaving the same way we do. I often say when I'm on stage speaking to audiences around the world, that the same irrational behavior that we find inexcusable in others is the default wiring for how we make our very own decisions. So the same way you think someone else is crazy, you're not reasonable, you're not rational, you're making stupid decisions, hey, guess what, guys? That's how we do it. That's how you do it. That's how I do it. And so part of this beginning, by the way, in the second segment, we're going to talk about some really quality, actionable steps. I've got a whole list of them here that you can take 
in order to play this game better. But before we even get into that, I just want to set the stage that this matters because you're human. Whether you're in sales, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in corporate leadership, whether you're in accounting, whatever you're doing, you're going to engage with other humans. You're going to need other humans to rally behind you, whether it's at work, whether it's just a community cause, or whether it's you with your favorite hobby cheering for your favorite team somewhere. See, I'm all frothed up now. You got me worked up about this whole idea of politics. No matter what you're doing, no matter what your task is, you're going to need other humans. So that's what we're talking about, okay? So if you're not acting like a human, if you're judging someone else by a different standard than you judge yourself, then you need to not wonder anymore while no one wants to be around you. You need to, you need to stop wondering while people are avoiding you and saying, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna kinda go a different direction. We don't wanna be around this person. You're probably somebody, you're not playing politics. You're just being stupid. So hang with me, when we come back, we're gonna talk about a, a dozen things, maybe, maybe a few less, where I wanna share with you what I share with big billion dollar businesses on how to navigate different opinions, different humans, different smart people who believe strongly about things. What do you do when you disagree? What do you do when you think someone else is wrong? When we come back, I just wanna run through a few of those things, and I think when you leave, you're gonna feel refreshed that I've got two or three or five or 10 ways to win at the game of politics. Hang with us, we'll be right back. When you look at the lives of Olympic champions, brilliant scientists and world-changing business leaders, you'll notice that they do things differently than everyone else around them. They surround themselves with tools to help them be more effective. It's not just a t-shirt, a workbook, a wristband, or any of our other lifestyle products. It's about living a life of maximum impact. It's about reminding yourself that you live by a different set of rules. Your mission isn't to be ordinary. You're called to be a winner, a champion, a warrior against mediocrity. If you don't plan to be a champion, you'll end up disappointed, losing like everyone else. We won't let that happen. If you want to win, we've got your back. Welcome back. So we just spent a few minutes talking about being human. If you're not acting like a human, shame on you. Don't be stupid. Fix it, right? Act like a human being. And this goes into all of your relationships. Now, if you're thinking, Dan, I get it. I'm acting human, or at least I'm trying to. Give me some real brass tacks as a leader, as a person who operates in the world where politics matter. Now, as I told you, I work in 13 countries across the world with big billion dollar leaders, presidents, CEOs, senior vice presidents, EVPs of big companies, and they have to make hard decisions, right? They have to do things sometimes that mean someone gets fired or there's an organizational shift and someone who was the boss is now over here or this segment or this division is now inside this silo people's feelings get hurt. Talk about being human, that stinks when your feelings get hurt and you've spent a, a career working towards something and now it's changed. And so people often revert back into this game of playing politics. And so here are a couple suggestions on how to navigate this world of politics, but doing it to win, like if you wanna win, all right? So that's what we're talking about. Number one, it's okay to point the finger at someone else as long as you're honest when it comes to pointing the finger back at yourself. I often hear people say, no one's at fault. No one did this wrong. There's 18 people in a meeting. No one did anything wrong. Like no one's accountable because if, if they didn't do wrong, then they can't point the finger and say, I did something wrong. So we just stop pointing the fingers at anybody. And of course, the, the big problem there is that we don't get anything done. So it's okay to say, hey, Matt, you screwed up. You said you were going to have this by tomorrow. You didn't have it. You know, I'm yelling at Matt about my show notes. I just was yelling. You missed it. You missed it. But I was yelling at him about it, right? I, you know, you, I need this. You didn't get it to me. What, what's happening, right? But the same way that I call him out, I have to be ready and prepared to be called out myself. And I, you know, it's okay to say to someone, you didn't meet the mark. Next time you meet, need to meet the mark. That's okay. But just be ready when you don't meet the mark and someone calls you out, now it's your time to improve. Number two, someone else acting inappropriately isn't a valid argument for why you shouldn't get in trouble when you do the same thing. I'll often hear in executive relationships, they'll say, well, that person does that. 
you know, what's also funny is I'll also, I'll also hear that from my three-year-old. Well, not really my three-year-old. My seven-year-old son and my 10-year-old son will often say that to me. The same thing I hear from these big billion-dollar business leaders, which is like, well, this person got, didn't get rewarded when they did it, or this person did, and I don't understand why, 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 why. Okay, stop, stop. Just because someone else acts like an idiot and no one slaps them upside the head doesn't mean that you won't get slapped up upside the head when you do something stupid. So act according to the way you would want to be rewarded, right? So if you're challenging someone else to step up their game, if you're pointing the finger at somebody else going, look what's going on, then you need to act in a way where when someone does that to you, when you get rewarded or you get you know, taken to task for what you're not doing, be prepared for that, right? Okay. So if those around you don't know what you're doing, their natural assumption is that you're not doing anything at all. Okay, this is the single biggest thing that I hear from senior level management. I'm talking CEOs, EVPs, general managers. If they don't hear from you, they don't assume that you're working your behind off nights, weekends, every waking moment to make things happen. You know what they assume? You're doing nothing. Now, is that a fair assessment? Maybe not, but that's still what they're thinking. Spend some time working upstream and downstream, right? Letting people know, here's what we're doing. It can be a short two or three second email, right? Two or three a sentence email, but spend time just communicating. Assume that people don't really know what you're doing at all, right? Don't assume that they know that you were working your behind off to make things actually work. They, they don't actually know that. So if you're thinking that way, you're actually hurting your own career. So it's not even politics, it's just smart business. Let people know what you're doing. Number four, a little bit of respect and humility goes a long way in your relationships with other people. You know, sometimes it's appropriate just to say, I screwed up, I plan to do better next time, I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve, hopefully next time when we get these results, it's going to be better, here's what we're doing to improve. This whole machismo bullshit of, I don't do anything wrong, my shit doesn't stink, that's just, that's malarkey. Okay, it's complete malarkey. And you, you have to stop acting that way because what happens is you get away with that for so long, your boss might get away with that for so long, but eventually the crushing weight of a lack of humility will bring you to your knees. Whether it's someone like Mike Tyson, right? Think about this, heyday, he probably could have stood a little bit of humility or whether it's just someone else, like we've seen in recent politics, where it's Anthony Weiner or somebody else, who's like this complete lack of humility, this lack of respect for other people, what happens? Eventually this thing comes, comes crashing down on it. Number five, it's no one else's fault that you're not as successful as you wanna be, so, taking, so stop taking your frustrations out on them. Seriously, uh, if you're not where you wanna be, if you hate your job, that's no one else's fault at your business, okay? It's no one's fault that you're not making the amount of money that you want to make. It's no one else's fault that you're in debt. It's your fault, right? So stop taking that on everyone. Stop going to meetings grumpy and curmudgeon -y like the, uh, what is it, the grumpy cat I see on BuzzFeed. You know, stop being that guy just because you think, oh, if, I, if I'm negative on everything, eventually I'm going to be right. Okay, that's just, that's dumb. No one wants to be around you. Your career's going to go nowhere. Stop it. Number six, small details left unresolved always become the huge obstacles that eventually bring about your demise. If you're someone who's finding yourself saying, oh, that didn't matter, or you finish a meeting, here's one, here's one, okay, hanging with me, here's one, you go to a meeting, you leave the meeting, no one assigns responsibilities, no one has accountability, we just had a meeting, okay? So here's what needs to happen, you need to stop doing meetings because apparently you can't manage the details, you can't manage the follow up and follow through process, so you need to stop having meetings, okay? Because you can't seem to handle it. Think details like that. You're in a sales meeting, someone says, can you follow up with me about that? Absolutely, I'll get back to you. You leave, you go, you go fly, or you're on a plane, or on a train, or in your car, and five days later you haven't followed up. And you go, well that guy wasn't gonna buy anyways. How do you know? How do you know? You're making an excuse because you haven't managed the details. And I'll tell you, the default reaction from people who, who, who are making excuses, you know why they're doing that? Almost 100% of the time, it's because there were details in the past that did not get handled, and now they've mounted and mounted and mounted. It's a huge obstacle, and then it's like, oh, they're picking on me, or they were gonna buy from someone else. That's a load of crap. Had you managed the details, you wouldn't be in this position right now. Number seven, don't give answers to questions that you don't know the reason why they're being asked. Someone asks you a question, you're not sure what it is. 
Are you cheaper than your competitor if you're in sales? Uh, yeah, we've got the best prices. Well, maybe that guy doesn't want the best price. Your boss just said, why did you do this? And you go, ah. Uh, you know, you, a smart person will stop, take a second, take a deep breath, and ask, what makes you say that? Or tell me more, right? Don't answer questions that you don't know why they're being asked. It's just not smart. We're not going to say, forget about playing politics. It's just not smart. Number eight, if you're not sure what your value is, don't expect to be satisfied by the compensation other people give you. Now, in, in recent months, we've heard about this lean-in movement and women asking for fair pay, for fair wages. Completely for that, it's nonsensical that someone should get paid differently because of their sexual orientation or their gender. Like, disclaimer, that's just, that's just the truth. Nonsense if you pay your people differently because uh, uh, of sex or race or anything else. It's just stupid, right? Great people deserve a great amount of pay. But, but if you're not someone who can bottle up your value and present it, here's everything that I do, here's what I'm doing for this organization, here's how, I, how valuable I am, why would you expect that some HR person 75 buildings away and 300 miles in a different direction, right, would would sit down a piece of paper and go, I think I know why Dan Walshman is valuable. They don't, they don't even know, they, you're a number, right? So spend time being valuable, not bragging, not being one of these guys who's an idiot, not putting feathers in your cap, spend time being valuable. People pay for that. Number nine, fewer meetings and more short personal conversations go a long way. I hinted at this earlier, but I'm gonna pound on it now. Use tools like do.com, do.com, do.com. It synchronizes with your calendar. When you're in the meeting, you can take notes. You can uh, drive accountability. So-and-so's involved with this. This person's involved with this. Here's how it's going. Don't have meetings where people don't show up for, for uh, or don't do meetings where people just show up because you asked them to be there. I worked with a, a very large, uh, very, very, very large business, and I, we, uh, we agreed that one of our strategies for growth in 2015 was going to be we're eliminating meetings. No meeting can be longer than 15 minutes. If you have to have a meeting, it's going to be 15 minutes or less. And then you can tack on five more minutes at the end of that 15 minute meeting to provide accountability and next steps and assign responsibilities to people. No more meetings. How much better would you be if you had no more meetings? You would have to adjust how you behave, right? Why do you meet? You meet because you don't know. What if you did know? What if you had real-time information from chat messaging services and, and different systems that would keep you aware, right? Now you don't need to meet. Now you don't need to spend time preparing presentations for what you're going to talk about when you actually do meet. It's just nonsensical. We meet because of some other delinquency, something else going wrong. We then have to meet so we can all figure it out. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm all for a good brainstorming session. We have lots of them, right? But meetings where we're talking about things and then nothing gets done, it's a waste of time, right? You're wasting your time, you're not valuable, and you're probably convincing your boss that you're half the idiot that they actually think you are, right? So just stop the meetings. Number 10, how you say what you need to say is more important many times than what you actually say. Okay, so this is what's hard for all of you very literal intellectual people. I just said the truth. How many times have you said that, right? Right, 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 right. And then you're wondering why people are upset at you. And the reality is how you say what needs to be said is I'm tongue-tied at how massively important it is. It, it is the only thing that matters. You gotta believe me on it. It's the only thing that matters. Think about how you respond to your spouse, or think about how you respond to your, your boyfriend or girlfriend, or how you respond to somebody that you know who makes a comment, or like a week later you're fine with the comment, but when they say it, the way they say it, it's like, whoa, that was snarky, right? That was rude, right? right? And why? It wasn't necessarily what, it's the how. So think about your communication, right? And I, I can't recap all, all of these, right? Because we'll be way out of time and the segment's probably gone on way, way, way longer than, uh, than you expected. But take a few of these things and think about them. How many of these bad habits do you have? Seriously, I mean, are you doing meetings and not being valuable and, and are you just throwing out knowledge without being careful how it's presented? You gotta be careful. Look, the game of politics is a crafty one. And there will always be people who are, who are kind of jabbing knives and being passive aggressive. But, but look, look, look. Don't you dare tell me that that's the majority of people. The majority of the people that are in your church, in your family, in your community, in where you work, 
are good, hard-working people who just don't know how to follow the rules. The rules that we just talked about, they don't know that if I'm expecting you to be accountable, I need to be accountable myself, right? They don't follow the rules and then they get angry and they say, we're playing politics. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't follow the rules, you're going to get hurt. You're going to lose. You're going to not get the promotion. You're not going to get paid what you think is fair. And you can blame it on not playing politics. I totally get that. But I think the more fair statement is, more fair is that you're just not following the rules. So when we come back, we come back. I, got, I want to talk about one more thing. I promise it's going to be quick. It's like two minutes, three minutes, something like that. You know me, maybe 30, but probably two or three minutes. I'm going to talk about one area of politics, the biggest, like the, the most important area of politics about having a thick skin, right? People say you got to have one, especially if you're in the corporate environment. We're going to talk about it right when we come back. Good speakers inspire people. Great speakers inspire movements. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. If you're looking to drive massive change in your organization, you need an edgy conversation with Dan Waldschmidt. I gotta be honest with you, I feel a little more weak than I thought I would be. I was out running, I thought, I've been running for nine hours. That's insane, I've never done this before. He's a billion dollar business strategist and he's a movement leader. You're the guy, you're the girl, who is willing to do more of what you're doing than anyone else. Okay guys, welcome back. So we talked about how to be human. We talked about 10 things or so. I think there were 10 that we talked about ways to play this game of politics. This last point I want to talk about is called having a thick skin. So I, someone, in fact, on one of the episodes, I think it was episode six or seven, just said a good leader has thick skin. I wrote an article, oh, not too long ago about this idea of having a thin skin. I've always had a thin skin. I suspect a lot of you watching have a thin skin. Look, if you do something really well, like we agonize, we agonize over all this stuff, the content, the notes, like it bothers me when people say you have a stupid show. It, I mean, it really bothers me when people make critical comments that I think are unfair. I can't help that. Let me also tell you something. I meet a lot of rich, famous, successful people right in my line of work. I run the biggest companies in the world. We're downtown Washington, D.C., so we get to meet, you know, I guess you, you call them political celebrities, or I don't, I don't even know what you categorize them, but people who are supposedly making laws for us. But, uh, supposedly, way off track there. But what I often find in these people is that they have a thin skin, a thin skin, which goes counter to what you might think. People sometimes playing politics will say to you, oh, just get over it, right? You need to grow a, thin, a thick skin, right? You need to develop a thick skin. And I actually push back and say, no, if you're going to be successful, I think you have to take what you do personally. And when people tell you to have a thick skin, I think you should tell them, no, I care too much about where I want to end up. I care too much about what we're doing. I care too much about this movement. I care too much about fill in the blank, fill in the blank to have a thick skin because when you have a thick skin, nothing bothers you. And unfortunately, if you're gonna be successful, then things are probably gonna bother you. You're gonna fail, you're gonna screw up. So this whole idea of having a thick skin, forget about it when you're playing the game of politics, you're gonna get hurt, you're gonna make mistakes, other people are gonna screw you over, sometimes accidentally, sometimes on purpose. And the reality is if you follow the rules, we talked about the rules, if you follow the rules, what you're ultimately gonna end up is you're gonna be in the driver's seat, okay? So. Dan Walshman, this is the Edgy Perspective. I hope you come back and join us again. Like us, share stuff. Uh, one of you had a great idea. He said, don't tell us to share. Tell us to share it with one person. So I'm going to tell you what, what uh, Rahit said to us, which is share it with one friend. So go find one friend and then come back because we'll be here next week and hopefully thousands of you will be back here next week as well. This is the Edgy Perspective. Go be awesome.